Hello, I'm Dr. David Hawkins. I'm the director of the Marriage Recovery Center and I want to talk to you more about narcissism. This time I want to talk to you about being married to a narcissist. I've already talked to you about some of the narcissistic traits of the narcissistic personality disorder. I'm going to say NPD. Being married to one, having to deal with their wounds, can be an incredible challenge. So the NPD person, often a man, not always, but often a man, of course, can be characterized by traits of grandiosity, requiring excessive attention, exploiting others, expecting others to, to serve them, and their sense of entitlement can just be overwhelming. They're, they're often preoccupied with success and their own endeavors. And because of their preoccupation with themselves, they're not sensitive to you. With this sense of entitlement, they lack empathy. And that creates an incredible challenge in a relationship. So being married to a narcissist is difficult. But I'm going to give you some strategies about how you can more effectively relate to them. First of all, Understanding the problem is half the problem solved. Understanding the problem is half the problem solved. Once we can wrap our brains around what exactly is going on, we then can create a, a, a sense of diagnosis, if you will, and a sense of understanding of what is the problem and what action needs to be taken. And by the way, you're going to need someone who's going to help you to understand what is the problem what form does it take and what is the action that is needed to heal it. So understanding the problem is half the problem solved. Number two, I want you to stop criticizing and start encouraging solutions. Now these men are often thin-skinned. It's not just them, by the way. Most of us are thin-skinned. Very few of us want to be criticized. We don't want complaints, and men especially don't want criticism. And so, if you'll formulate the issue in the form of asking for something specific, it's going to go a whole lot better than complaining, complaining, complaining. Complaints won't do it. They will push away from them, they will defend themselves from them, and it will break connection. So, formulate what you need, ask for what you need in a gentle but direct way, and expect to seek solutions with them. Number three, attack the problem and not the person. You've probably heard that cliche before, but it's a good one. Attack the problem, not the person. And so, you're not going to, you're not going to, uh, cast blame on their character. You're not going to call them selfish or self-centered or egotistical or narcissistic. You're going to say, I need some help with you on keeping the house clean. I need some help with you from you on our finances. I need some help from you in raising our children. Would you be willing to do that? It's going to go a whole lot better than saying, you, you never help me out with the kids. You never help me out with finances. You never, yeah, uh, uh, that's just not going to go well. Number four, seek first to understand and then to be understood. <coughs> if you can seek to understand this man and understand what's happening with him, it's going to go a whole lot better. Not that he deserves to be understood completely aside from understanding you, but understand him and then seek understanding from him. And if you'll do that in this collaborative relationship, it's going to go a whole lot better. Number five, set healthy boundaries. Oh my goodness, someone smarter than me has said, a healthy fence makes healthy neighbors. Well, the same can be applied in a marital relationship. Healthy boundaries creates a healthy relationship. Now, a boundary without consequences is not a boundary. So I've already said that complaining needs to be eradicated from your relationship. Setting healthy boundaries is so good and so healthy. 
An example of that is this. I can talk to you and listen to you when you speak respectfully to me. And when you don't, I can't. Pretty simple. I can listen to you when you speak respectfully to me, and so I'm going to insist that you speak respectfully to me for me to listen. And I'm happy to listen to you. I want to listen to you. But I can only do it when you speak respectfully to me. Okay, practice that kind of a model in all of your boundary setting with your man. Finally, I want you to seek professional help. This kind of a problem, NPD problems, are well beyond anything you can do from reading a book or from talking to him or encouraging him or all of the steps that I've already outlined. Get help. Get into this therapeutic healing container where you form a relationship with a really good clinician who is going to sit with you and going to work on these problems. And by the way, yes, you can insist that your man engage in counseling. I know he at first is going to say no, and secondly he's going to say no, and maybe even third time he's going to say no. But if you make it very clear, you know, for me to be in a relationship with you, I need us to be growing. I need us to have good, healthy boundaries. I need us to know how to set, set expectations that are realistic and to seek solutions, and I need us to be in a counseling relationship. If you're consistent with that message and clear with that message, you're very likely going to get through to him. So this has been more on this issue of narcissism, which is so rampant. And I want to help you out. I want to be part of your team to work on this problem. You can learn more about my work at marriagerecoverycenter.com, marriagerecoverycenter.com, you can email me at drdavid at marriagerecoverycenter.com. I'll be happy to answer your emails. I know you're concerned. I know you're looking for solutions. And I want to help you with them. Take care.